Hey everyone, welcome back. Today on the corner, I've been running the uh, Troxy default firmware for a while on my XY2 Pro, so I figured it would be a perfect time to do a firmware shootout. Troxy default firmware versus Marlin. Stay tuned. Let's have another shootout. So what I'm going to do is I have the default Tronxy firmware that I've been running for a week or two right now. And you know what? I got a cube here, turned off, moved it, got another cube, turned off, moved it, got another cube, turned off, moved it, got another. So basically that fix I did seems to work for the Z offset. You know, as I say, it's like dice, right? I got all these moving them around the bed, turning the, the printer off and on, and trying it in different spots. That fix by Jeff Victor seemed to work. So I now have this um, actually completely level. Uh, well, can you ever really get it completely level? But I'm at uh, 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 0.00, and 0 0.04 at the corners. So I think that's pretty level. As I throw those dice away, or calibration tubes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Prusa slicer and I'm going to slice three different models. Then I am going to print the three models with the default Troxy firmware. And I'm going to print the same G code with the Marlin firmware, and then we're going to compare them at the end. But first, we need a couple controls in place. So what I've done is I've leveled the bed, so it's about as close to level as I can get. With that said, so that's one control out of the way. So the bed is level. Perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do one calibration square, about whatever yay big right in the middle of the bed and I'm going to see what that first layer looks like with the Marlin firmware or sorry not, with the Troxy firmware I'm going to see what that first layer looks like I'm going to save that because when I load up Marlin and I adjust my Z offset I'm going to try to match that that way we'll have a, the same base to build up on so we can compare the model I guess the next thing is, so we got the bed level, we're going to try and get the Z offset about the same, uh, we're using the same G code, so I guess what we need, the third thing is filament. We're going to need to run something with the filament. So I'm looking here, I have a bunch of open rolls, I don't want to use that, um, let's use, um, I'm going to drop a benchy down, ah, benchy down, benchy down, woo, woo. all right. I have uh, a couple of brand new boxes. Well, I have a lot of boxes. <laughs> I have this uh, Mech Solutions filament that seems to work okay for me. Um, and it is, what's it called? It's just an orange. It's got a nice little color there. I'll use this. Oh, actually, here. Let me open this up. Make sure the seal is good and stuff. So the seal is good. There's a bit of concaveness going on here. So I know it's good vacuum sealed. Right, that actually is a pretty decent seal. The wind on this filament is not too bad. It's not the best. It's far from the best, but it's not too bad. So I'm going to use this for my test. So I have a brand new roll of filament. I have a level bed. And I'm going to have a decent Z offset. Alright, so here's that roll of filament. I am going to... Um, here. See if I can pop it for you here. Let's see if you can hear this beautiful sound here. Did you get that? I don't know if you did. It had a nice little hiss. Right, open this bad boy up. Oh, so this is, um, what did I say it was? It was Mech Solutions, but it's actually CCC Tree, I guess. And it's STPLA. I don't know what STPLA is. We're going to find out.
See, stuff just doesn't always go good and perfect and stuff. Like, this is what I woke up to this morning trying to figure out this test. Yeah, gonna have to fix this. <sighs> All right. So curse print take 17. Just kidding, but yeah, having a hard time with this. So hopefully we'll be able to get something done. Okay, so first round of prints are done. I'm gonna take these off the bed. And now, so if they're going to replace the bed, perhaps properly, <laughs> there we go, and we're going to um, power down and power back up. And we're back on Marlin. So now I'm going to run a calibration for my Z offset. And then I'm going to run those prints. All right, so it's been a few days. I've had some issues, but I finally managed to complete the prints. So I had a big of a challenge with the, um, the original firmware printing. I also had a challenge with the Marlin firmware printing the three models. I um, have actually a lot of um, failed prints that I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then I had a problem with the printer with the uh, Bowden tube and all sorts of wonderful things like, you know, you, you want to do a couple videos, you want to test out some things and it doesn't always go silk smooth, right? Like you just, you know, this is life. It's real. It's like, we're running a bunch of prints. I probably blew through half a roll of filament in order to do two tests, right? One on the Marlin, one on the uh, original firmware with three models. Um, stuff happens and I'm going to show you some of that stuff and some of the surprising results right now. So yeah, so I was um, pretty much um, printing away. I got the Marlin print test done. I switched to the, the, the default stock firmware and I had some issues. I was um, printing a bunch of times. It just did not want to get through this. And because of that, I have a bunch of, well, this one here I can probably use for a recessed peanut butter cup mold or something, <laughs> but um, yeah, I got more and more and more. When I finally um, got close, like this was like really promising. And then there was a couple of layers missing in the middle. Um, and this was on the uh, chip box firmware or the 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 original firmware on the Tronxy. Um Okay, so just to go back, um, the slicer settings I had set up were actually tuned to the Marlin firmware. So that was the G code that I used for all my prints. Now, understanding that it's two different firmwares, you are going to have to adjust somewhat. So that being known, I knew I would have some problems. But I didn't expect to have that many problems. <laughs> but 
But that being said, I'm going to show you something that was actually surprised me. This here was the first print off the bed with the Marlin firmware. Now it failed, but it recovered. Unlike these guys here with the, uh, the stock firmware that went so high and they did not recover. So I think I got lucky with this. Now, all these failures, um, I did tweak. I tried to print a little higher, a little cooler, a little slower, a little faster, just standard things that you would do once the print is running and you notice a problem to adjust while the print's printing. Right? You can do that with any firmware. Um, you can lower your temperature if you notice that you're having a little stringing or whatever. Um, so that's kind of, I didn't do that with the Marlin, but I did that with the Tronxy. Now then, this is the final product with the Tronxy firmware. It did not fail after a while. But, and I'll do a close-up of this, you'll see some retraction issues on this. Um, and I did notice that with all of the Tronxy stuff I did on the Tronxy firmware, there were, um, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, there you go. All right, you'll, you'll. I'll, I'll have some close-ups of these in a minute. Um, but, yeah, there was um, just a little bit of retraction issues. But overall... Not bad at all. Um, and you have to remember, as I said, this was originally tuned on the Marlin firmware. But that's my Marlin Benchy. And that is my stock firmware Benchy. They're not too bad. Or did I actually get them confused? No, see, I got them confused. It's the other way around. <laughs> all right. So... Um, I'm going to give you guys some close-ups right now, so you guys can have a look at this. That's the Marlin. That's the default firmware. Marlin. That's kind of hypnotic, isn't it? Default. And finally, Marlin. <clears throat> no, I actually need to push this back a little bit. There we go. And default firmware. And um, ultimately, I guess the whole thing is here. The prints are very comparable. Um, had I tuned a profile perfectly or very good for the default firmware, uh, I, the only thing I really noticed, as I said, was the retraction settings were a little bit off. But other than that, they look extremely close. Extremely close. Just a little bit with, as I say, retraction settings. Um, but because I guess Marlin had a 
unfair advantage maybe because that was the profile I used was the one I was used to with Marlin um, printing off of both firmwares. So I guess the bottom line is they both printed great. Um, tuning to your firmware is very important. Uh, but hey, if your stock Marlin, or sorry, if your stock Tronxy XY2 Pro is printing right, you're, you've got your Z offset fixed, that that's working properly, it works great. It's a great machine. It's awesome. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, for those of you that like tinkering a bit more, who like um, changing things up, who are more familiar with the Marlin style or firmware, switch it up. It's going to run great. It's going to do great prints. It's um, bottom line. It's a great little printer for the price. Um, I, I didn't have problems with it before I switched to um, Marlin with the exception of that pesky Z offset. And you'll see, if you go back to my videos, you'll see a fix for that put up by Jeff Victor. It worked great. I actually, um, while I was doing this, I did not change my EEPROM and it retained the, um, my Z offset in the, in the settings. So it was great. I didn't have to do anything. I just changed the firmware and off I went to the races with the exception of all this broken stuff, right? But you know what? You learn as you do stuff. Um, this video took me a lot longer to put together because each time I printed this, it was like 17 hours and I got what? One, two, three, four. I got five bowls here. That's like five extra days of tweaking and tinkering and <laughs> trying to get it right. As I say, I finally did it enough so I could get a decent print by adjusting the, the, the speed and the heat a little bit. And that seemed to work out okay. It survived. <laughs> so, but I'll show you these. Um, and I just wanted to say, choose whichever firmware you like. They're both great. They both work fantastic. If they work for you, great. All right, so if you like this little shootout here and if you like this video, feel free to leave a comment, hit the subscribe button, and you know what? Peace out, okay?